So this question comes from Patreon supporter Tali. Hello, Tali. I'm thinking of starting a YouTube channel as well. What would you advise beginners uh, to prioritize? What has been particularly influential to your growth? So I really love this question. And obviously, I might have some experience with it. You know, I think you'll find that um, most game dev uh, YouTube channels at the moment kind of fall into one of three categories. You have, um, you know, tutorials, maybe like devloggers, and then you kind of have general advice videos. I try to kind of combine all three, doing a bit of each, where, you know, some channels might lean towards one or another category, where, you know, Brackies was doing um, primarily tutorials, and, you know, say Danny the Milkman started by making tutorials, but then kind of gravitated towards um, more entertainment um, devlog style videos. YouTubers don't always choose where their channel goes, because they get um, pushed around by the views and algorithm, kind of molding their um, channel, their persona, kind of what kind of videos they make. With an extreme example of this being a video I saw recently, or a channel rather, he started as like a um, violinist and he's like a vegan, but within a space of a year, he uh, turned his channel into like one of these um, grotesque overeating channels where he was just like stuffing his face to the point where he was like in a wheelchair and on a respirator or something. So. I mean, absolutely horrendous, but it's an example of what can happen um, due to kind of these YouTube forces. And I say this because I think it's important to kind of establish who you want to be on camera. How do you want to be portrayed? And you have that choice. You know, YouTube is uh, like very theatrical. You know, different channels sometimes put on different personas and different personality types. You know, some very outrageous, some not. Um, That's a choice. You know, I kind of try to go down the authentic path which is uh, more aligned with my own personality. Like if you were to sit down with me for a coffee or a drink, I'd be talking like this. This is how I am. Um, And I think people who know me will attest to that. But importantly, it's um, more sustainable long term. It's easier to make content and people will gravitate more towards I think truth, because people can call bullshit on things pretty easily. Like humans are, have a very good bullshit meter for the most part. And um, if you're kind of putting on a charade or trying to be um, sincere, but you're not, then often that um, will come through. So I think um, if you want to have growth, then you need views, of course. And one way to have views is to be relatable, essentially. And one way to be relatable is to be honest and to be truthful. So that's kind of a strategy that I try to adopt and I feel like it's not a bad approach. So the other thing to realize about YouTube is that it's a slow game. You know, contrary to what some might believe, um, it doesn't offer that much in terms of financial incentive. Um, Ad revenue is fairly low for the amount of work that often uh, goes in. So profit should not be your driving force. Rather, it should be the byproduct of your work. There are, however, a lot of indirect benefits and incentives for doing this kind of work. You know, you improve a lot of different skills, you improve your confidence, um, you improve your, let's say, public speaking uh, ability, and, you know, you improve um, your video editing, which admittedly is probably the worst aspect of being a YouTuber, is editing. Admittedly, I've become uh, quite good at it, but I absolutely despise it. (laughs) And notably, you have to learn to deal with criticism, even hate. Uh, For while the vast majority of people are sensible and positive, there are always a few deviants that will take it upon themselves to, you know, try to ruin your day by writing some, you know, wild comment. But to answer your question more directly, you asked what should you prioritize? I would say clearly define your value exchange. You know, what are you planning to give the community in exchange for views? Um, You know, this might be knowledge, this might be entertainment or something interesting, but there needs to be a clear value exchange, at least at the start. You know, as a channel grows, um, some people might start gravitating towards the creator's personality. Um, So part of the value exchange becomes, you know, hanging out with a person in the video, um, which I suppose falls into entertainment in a sense, which is another reason it's useful to have an authentic personality because that can be part of your value exchange, I suppose you could say. You know, even if they are not the best traits, you know, we see a lot of uh, popular YouTubers who are kind of assholes and are um, known for being assholes. That's their thing, you know, but but they're authentic assholes, you see, quite often. So people 
um, respect them for that. <laughs> they respect the authenticity. And sometimes you'll see these new channels starting up, you know, with zero value exchange, you know, expecting to be admired, to be revered. You know, it's a fool's errand because when you start out and have no subs, there is no social proof. Um, you have to build that with that value exchange. And in terms of technical advice, I would say um, get your audio right from the start. You know, invest in a microphone like a Yeti Blue. They're, they're very affordable. Um, you know, your voice is you. And even if your, you know, um, camera is not the best, you know, when I started, I was using my phone to record, but I, I used a um, at least a half decent microphone because, you know, there's nothing worse than coming to a YouTube channel and you can't understand what they're saying or the microphone is crackling or popping. Like nobody's going to subscribe to a channel like that. Even if the information is, is half decent, often people can't get past uh, that audio. I think early on I had a very bad uh, uh, room acoustics and I made this really cool video that I put a lot of time into. Um, took a, maybe like a week or two of just filming and editing. But, um, you know, the comments are just full of people commenting on my audio saying, oh, there's too much echo, too much reverb. Get some sound padding. I was like, ah, okay, I see what's happened here. Video quality is, of course, important too, but not nearly as important as the audio quality, I think. Um, you can get away with having like a Logitech HD webcam, which is one that I used for a um, quite a while, actually. So I kind of upgraded my equipment as my channel grew, and I tried to put the you know ad revenue aside, which I could then use to upgrade all the equipment. And I now have you know this kind of fancy mic and various kind of high definition cameras that I can use. This topic is something that I want to kind of get into deeper in a kind of more dedicated video because I think there's a lot to be said about um, becoming a YouTuber. I, th I feel like more people are thinking if you're a game dev, you need a YouTube channel. Um, I have some opinions on that <laughs> because I think that um, the essentially the time investment that you get yourself into um, with a YouTube channel is not necessarily productive for game development. Uh, it can be kind of quite detrimental to the actual core process of making a game so you kind of kind of know what you're getting into and what you want out of it because it's kind of counterintuitive in a sense where um, you know you can spend a year um, building a YouTube channel doing all this stuff and just spending hundreds of hours and with the intention of you know promoting your game where somebody could have just spent instead you know three hundred dollars on on Google ads and got the same return Time invested is not always um, equate to returns, especially in terms of um, uh, selling a game. So thank you for your question, Tali. I really enjoyed answering that one. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do drop the video a like. And thanks to all the Patreon supporters who helped make this video possible. If you'd like to help support this channel and my work, you can check out the Patreon link below. Alternatively, you can wishlist my game on Steam. I'd really appreciate that. I'll drop a link for that below. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.